pathetic when you think about it. This just in, typewriter sounds. My ex-roommate apparently felt the need to contact one of my pals lately. Apparently, I made up the entire she cheated stuff to let said pal know. Ha ha. First and foremost, it's been nearly six weeks. I've progressed. Second, in my opinion, if someone feels compelled to go out of their way to contact someone to inform them that. Whatever you heard about ain't true. That is correct. Just a thought. Would you feel the need to embark on a really it isn't true? No really. Never occurred tour if you were innocent? Come on day really, it's pathetic. I've taken responsibility for my blunders in the entire ordeal and am now in treatment to understand why and how to find a better relationship in the future. While she seems to be yelling false news to anyone. The stereotypical concealed narcissist. Gaslight. Change the blame. It's very sad. Update 1. It's been 7 weeks since I confronted my ex-roommate about her infidelity. I knew it had been 7 weeks since I told her that. It's been 7 weeks since I informed her we were through, that her presence in my home was no longer welcome. It's been 7 weeks since I booted her TF out. It's also been 7 wonderful weeks since I ghosted her. Back in the day, it was referred to in a much more clinical manner, no contact. I've had awful relationships in the past. I've previously avoided making contact. After wasted 39 to 48 with that narcissistic, emotionally abusive former roommate, I much prefer what the youngsters are calling it now at the age of 48. Ghosting. It has a lot more, mysterious. Feel about it. You transform into. A ghost. You just fade away. You no longer exist in their eyes. To me, I've simply barred her from all modes of contact, erased every email, picture, card, letter, and social media post, am deleting her out of my 7-year-old blog about my cats and technology, and donated heaps of stuff she left behind when she fled in terror and humiliation to a local charity. When she sees other people wearing her sketchers, all she can think of is I'm a ghost. All of my pals have also blocked her. She is said to have messaged one or two of my distant Facebook acquaintances in an effort to transfer the responsibility to me. What about the swindling? The obvious message was that he made it up. If I don't succeed, I may run an ad. One such Facebook buddy, upon notifying me of this communication from her, replied with a very effective. As if. That, my friends, is the effect. Or is it the cause. Of ghosting. So, to those of you who submit your experiences and wonder, what should I do? Should I abandon her? Should I call it quits with him? What should I say? Ghost. When you're a cheater, you're always a cheater. They are not going to change. I understand that having children or being married makes ghosting more difficult. Regardless. Ghost. Eight weeks ago, I planned to hang myself from my bedroom closet door because I was so fed up with the fact that my one-time girlfriend had become nothing more than a roommate, hadn't touched me in five years, and was cheating on her UPS man, because I thought I had no other option. Then I saw the texts. Take a peek at me now. I'm a phantom. I'm the happiest I've been in at least five years. So, if they've treated you in this manner. Become a ghost. They are entitled to nothing less from you. Maintain your fortitude. Update 2. Greetings, 8 weeks ago, hello, this is me on the 22nd of March. I understand how you feel. You quit your job just before the holidays and didn't tell anybody. You had a secret plan to hang yourself in your bedroom closet because you couldn't handle the emotional torture from this stranger who used to be your girlfriend any longer. You did everything to reach her, to communicate to her, week after week, month after month, only to be greeted with selfishness, ignorance, and silence. You thought you were the lunatic. After all, she's been telling you for years. You're feeling confined. You were certain she was having an affair. You believe there is no way out except. A rope. Now, pay attention. Pay close attention. Your concerns about her are valid. Here are a few tidbits, you are correct. She was cheating, at the very least emotionally, if not physically. She'll forget to wear her watch tonight. You're going to pick up that watch, input the password you knew but kept to yourself, and read her messages like it's your life. Which, as it happens, it does. When you read the messages she wrote to him, your heart will practically leap out of your chest. It was the UPS driver. Your intuition was right. Now, here's the bit you won't believe. You will make it through this. You will be okay. Yes, it will be painful, but you are going to summon power you never thought you had. You'll discover who your genuine pals are, and there are many more than you believe. You'll want to die. But the desire will pass fast. You're going to confront her, just like you should have done years ago. 
you'll break the cycle of emotional abuse and narcissism. You're going to dump her and kick her TF out of the house. You're going to ignore her for the rest of your life. It'll feel amazing even faster than you imagine. So pay attention. Please read this. It should be noted. Print it out. What are you experiencing right now? It's just going to get better from here. I guarantee you that. How do I know this? Isn't this something I'm writing to you? Maintain your fortitude, be brave, you're about to experience your big moment, and it's going to be wonderful. Remove the rope. It's not going to come in handy. Story 2. Fiancé cheated on me with her friend. I really really need to convey my tale to someone other than my therapist, and I'm too embarrassed to tell my closest friends or relatives. For the last 11 years, I've known my ex-fiancé. We dated on and off for the first five years while I was on active service, and we had been together for the final six. At the conclusion of my active duty, she expressed interest in entering a branch of service, and I backed her choice by ensuring she was adequately equipped. We were planned to purchase a home when she joined and settled in, so I began looking over our finances. We were able to pay off all of our outstanding debts and improve our credit ratings to near-perfect levels as a result of their efforts. During that time, I also got a brand new automobile for her, cash, since we planned to have a baby this year. After a month at her unit, she began talking about marriage more regularly, so I decided to approach her about establishing a date. We did, and we warned friends and family to expect an RSVP in the mail. A month later, I get a FaceTime call from her when she is hanging out with several pals, including two married couples and three other single friends, 2M, 1F. All of these folks I'd met previously. I was at a friend's home, a couple. She was stationed roughly a 13-hour drive away, and I was due to go there that month, having previously received a transfer from my work. During the call, when she was going around having me welcome everyone, one of the single guys grabbed slash hugged her very inappropriately while welcoming me, which my buddies also saw, embarrassing. They waited until the conversation finished before asking whether I had observed anything unusual. Yes, I saw, I said. I drove up a few days later to relocate some belongings. I took up her phone to make a call since it was within arm's reach, the password had been reset, and for the first time in six years, it was set to, do not disturb. I disregarded it at first since I assumed I was simply thinking about everything in my thoughts. Later that night, when I asked, she became really defensive, I was not confrontational. There were several additional little indications that something was wrong. That night, we had, I think we were both unaware that she was already pregnant for the guy. I told her the following day that there are a lot of problems we need to work out before we get married and advised counseling, did not go well. I returned home after packing my belongings. For some reason, I felt disgusted the whole time I was there and chose to leave. She found out she was pregnant that same month and married the man the next month to preserve face, I think. We weren't trying for a baby and took all necessary measures. She did, however, have unprotected with the man on the night of the FaceTime conversation and blamed it on drink, which was hilarious. I cautioned her on many times about how simple it is to discover adultery in the military if you don't keep it together. When she was on duty slash at work at 2 slash 3 am, away from her husband, she continued phoning me and saying, I made the greatest mistake of my life. I barred her from contacting me in any way. It's been a year, and I'm finally getting my life back together. I'm still working on my mental health, which has been difficult given my PTSD, extreme anxiety, and despair. However, I have gone a long way. I am steady, sober, and content. Over the last three years, I have seen six dear friends from the military commit suicide, and I could never have anybody feel the way I do. I'm just glad I didn't get to the point where I pondered it. Thank you for reading this and enabling me to express myself. I needed to express myself someplace. Sorry for the choppy chronology, it's already very lengthy lol, and I didn't want to add to it.